grabe yung experience na yun hindi ko makakalimutan yung yung pagtingin ko na umaangat na yung bubong yung talagang sinigawan ko na yung pamilya ko na labas na tayo kasi hindi na safe dito yung mga anak ko sa madaling araw natatakot na sila kasi biglang biglang lumakas yung hangin niya nagiiyakan na sila sabi ko wag na wag kayo wag tumigil na kayo magpray na lang kayo na magpray tapos sabi ko din wag, wag kayo magtaranta nandito naman kami nakakala ko kaming kinakabahan naiiyak na lang po kami baka po kasi yung bumbong namin yung bumbong namin mahiwalay tsaka po delikado po yung kasi yung ito po ang simento na po si parang sumasayaw na po siya sinira namin yung bakod kahit maraming nakapatong na mga pako na mga kahoy, kinabar ko yung mga anak, yung mga anak ko kahit para, para hindi lang matamaan ng mga lumilipad na kahoy sa yung sa roof ng kuwamba. Tapos doon, pagpunta namin sa safe na lugar, doon, doon ko na nakita yung bahay ko po, unti-unti nang ililipad yung kuwan, roof niya. Katapos yung bagyo, bumalik kami dito. Parang lahat kami sa pamilya parang tulala muna kahit kahit gugutom kami parang wala hindi parang hindi na namin na kuan yun naramdaman kasi yung buong inipon ko dito ko binuhos sa bahay na to tapos 3 months lang yun nilipad agad siniraga ng bagyo iniisip ko yung pamilya ko yung kakainin namin lalo yun ng inumin namin na tubig okay lang kahit tayo mamalaki kaya natin mag-save ng kuan kahit ilang days pero yung mga yung mga bata parang One month after Typhoon Haiyan hit Eastern Visayas, particularly the cities of Ormoc, Tacloban, and its municipalities, World Vision still sees people on the streets queuing up for assistance. It is because of this reason that World Vision is still here, and we are just so thankful that we are able to reach out through food, through water, through non-food items, through hygiene kits, through cooking sets, through shelter kits. We namin mahirap kami pasukin dito ng kuan, ng mga relief, kasi nasa solo kami ng kuan yung barangay namin. Malaking pasalamat namin. Pagdating ng World Vision kasi, malaking grasya yung binigay nila. Hindi namin na-expect ganun kalaki. Yung pinakagusto ko po dyan, yung bigas po at ulam. Kahit wala na pong gamit, basta po meron kaming kakainan. At hindi po kami magugutom. Yung trapal, malaki yung natulong dito. Kasi nung una, nung dito sa bahay, pag umulan, pumapasok yung tubig dito ngayon, halos buong bahay na namin na nalagyan na ng trapal, yung kumot, kulambo. Kasi pag gabi talaga, hindi ka makatulog sa ingay ng namok. Lalo na sa tubig kasi yung inisip ko yung inumin ng bata, hindi kasi safe dito yung mga nagdi-deliver. Uh, within Tacloban City, with, the, with such the devastation of the storm surge in particular, that the whole water system's just been damaged and a lot of the pipes have been cracked and, and the problem is with so much debris around. So the water that's going through the system at the moment is just being lost. It's being lost to the ground, lost back to sea. People can't use the water systems at the moment because there's no power. So people are reverting to the hand pump, uh, like we see in the back here. And unfortunately, a lot of the, well, a lot of the hand pumps and, and the wells uh, are contaminated. Uh, it's, it's even pre-typhoon. Um, they're not really well looked after, as you can see by this hand pump behind us. So our biggest challenge at the moment, what we're doing is getting a lot of uh, water disinfection or water purification out to, to the um, people. And that's using uh, existing government structures through the community health workers. And they're assisting us to distribute and provide uh, health promotion to those people in need. And so we're supporting them with resources and training to, to do that. Ito lang yung, kung lang, yung bahay ko, parang yun lang hinahangad ko na sana mabalik na yung roof niya. Tapos dito yung dingding na nasira. There's a lot of damage and a lot of need. The first phase of the response has been around emergency supplies. So we've been giving shelter kits, which include two tarpaulins and one rope, and that's just for the relief phase. 
to give people an emergency and life-saving um, material that they can use to just cover their damaged shelters. Uh, the next phase of the program will be much more around reconstruction and recovery. So we'll be looking at rebuilding completely damaged housing and giving people opportunities for income generating through training and provision of materials and skills development. So we'll try to get a good rounded package to meet people's shelter needs. <laughs> Ibalik na nila yung mga blackboard para maturuan na po kami ng ibang leksyon. Po, ng ibang leksyon kasi po hindi po namin alam yung ibang leksyon pa. We're trying to work towards addressing those particular issues that have been raised by the children in their concern. Which is primarily, um, they would like to go back to school. They would like to have places to be able to play. So we are addressing those needs by setting up child-friendly spaces. That will address issues around being able to play, being able to connect with their friends. Some of the child-friendly spaces will be used as temporal learning centers, and then slowly get that into and transition that into the education system. So it's just basically, you know, set up places where children are being, they're able to just come and, and be children. Places like this. Nakita ko mas maraming, mas maraming nasira doon, lalo na yung mga namatay. Doon ko na-realize na kami, okay kami kahit na Nabagyohan kami na sira yung bahay namin. At least safe yung family ko. Kaya doon nagsisikap kami po unti-unti makabangon. People are trying to build their lives again. But there is this big challenge of really working with communities and other key actors in the humanitarian work so that these families are able to rebuild lives back better.